mind, the consciousness or the energy that was perhaps the source of this creation. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe that just, maybe it is just, just, and we are a tiny aperture through which the universe just views itself. And we have emotion, and we can argue, and we can be bad people and hold resentment, but why? Is that the test? I hear what you're saying, but just for a moment put yourself in my position. And you've said some amazing things. Just take this as a hypothesis. Yeah. Is it not possible that there is an all-powerful God that created this creation, put us near the sun so we don't burn, created us to interact with each other, to love one another, and to be in relationship with this God, and that the intricacy of the DNA, the mathematics and the logic, and the vastness of the universe was created by an all-powerful God. That's my first proposition. Is it not possible? It is. I would say, yeah. It's, I mean, why not? It, why not? Of course it is. Okay. But equally, why? You know, the, the only the only problem I have with um, books is that they're written by men. And the, the, the putting the word God to it, I would agree with still. But going as far into your own consciousness or like just the, the whole patterns of everything and the history of books written by men and what it says about higher beings and God, what we're trying to do is, it's a little thread. What we've got is a little thread, a little idea of what God is, but really it's just a, you know, like the sun for instance in our solar system is the most powerful thing there. Yeah, yeah. But you could argue that there is a source, a central thing that possibly is quite similar to us. Yeah. That has in some sense of intelligence that we're not aware of, on a level we're not aware of. Yeah. That therefore did put out their design. So yes, I would argue absolutely. But what I, what I said previously is exactly why I wouldn't put my faith into the Bible or uh, the parallel story of the ancient Egyptians. You know the story of Osiris yeah. and Isis and how um, Virgin Isis birthed. Uh, Horus on the 25th of December and he had 12 followers and opened the church by the time he was 30. It's parallel with Jesus but that story came from somewhere. And the intelligence of them saying well there are higher beings that came down and brought us this intelligence to realise we need to love one another. That came from somewhere. And the only truth you find in it is that sense of warmth and love and togetherness. But you look at this planet and if, it, let's just say aliens, let's go there. If they did land somewhere, yeah. we are not earthly. We're not of this earth. We, we seem to think that the earth belongs to us, but we belong to it. Yeah. And equally, you could argue that Gaia or Earth is God, for, in a way. Because the, it's one thing that breaks up in that mathematics, the whole fabric would disintegrate. And that right. could happen anyway. Right, right, right. So, again, I'm not... Go on, sorry. So, I hear what you're saying. You said a lot there. In the hypothesis of God, but another hypothesis, that if there is a God if, and, was, and everything's been created by this God, then could it not be that God wants to communicate to us? If God wants to communicate to us, is it not possible that a book would be presented by God, made by God, to communicate to us? That's, the, that's one thing. The other thing about the things that you said about, uh, just speaking so people can hear, uh, about uh, Osiris, 25th of December. Now, Everything that you've said has been amazing. Right? It's been really good. You know your stuff. When you moved into the 25th of December, that, that's when you let yourself down a little bit. Because you need to go and study that kind of stuff. Saturnalia was brought in by the Romans. At yeah, the you need, the you need to go and study that stuff. Because we know that Jesus was not 25. born 25th. Uh -huh. So why would people want to say it's a copy of that? Because I've studied this and I know this, I have a degree in, in Manchester University in theology. So this is my kind of thing. So, so if you study the ancient books, the ancient Egyptian religion, the Book of the Dead, study um, uh, Greek hymns and things like that, a lot of this stuff is the atheist, not you, but mainly atheist, impose the Christian understanding of Christ onto this ancient religions and interpret the text. So what you get then is a popularized mythology uh, on the internet saying that all these other ancient gods are the same as Jesus. They had the virgin birth on the 25th. But if you looked into it, Dr. Wells, who was a German uh, linguist and a German, 
uh, popularized the stuff uh, a few years ago and he's abandoned it. And the reason why he's abandoned it is because when you study an ancient religion, you've got to go to the text yourself. If you study the text, you find that this, this is not, not accurate. It's not accurate. So I would just say to you, check your source before you say things like that. Yeah. Because you mentioned Jesus, let me get on to that. All right, we've got to get on to that. All right. Jesus said, I've got to get you on this now. Jesus said, in, Matthew, in John uh, 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So Christ says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, the Christian position is that mankind has fallen, the sinners, God gave the Ten Commandments to show that we're sinners, don't lie, don't steal, to break our conscience. We couldn't fulfill those commandments, but Christ, God the Son, came down in human flesh, so God wasn't just a, a far away, he came down in Jesus Christ and went to the cross. Jesus said, I give my life in ransom for many. And he died, and as he was dying on that cross, he was dying as your saviour, Matthew. He was shedding his blood with the cross of crown of thorns on his head, nailed to the cross. And the world, the world wants to get to heaven by philosophy, science, thinking it can do it. But the cross is foolishness to man. To see. To the Greeks it was foolishness, to the Jews it was foolishness. But there he's hanging on the cross and he's dying on your behalf. He died and he rose again according to the Bible. And if you confess your sin and believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you enter into a connection with, with God where your sins are forgiven and you have a relationship with God and now you know who you are in the universe, that you're a child of God, you know what the universe is about it's, a, it's to bring glory to God, and it's to love God and your neighbor as yourself. Now that is the Christian paradigm, all right? So do you want to critique it or say stuff about it? The only thing I would say, you mentioned the fall of humanity. I fully agree with that. <coughs> I'd also say that, you know, Jesus was a... The, the, the only thing I'll say is that Jesus was put into his man. God was put... Yeah. But there, if, if so, yeah, yeah. and man is flawed. You know, people are flawed. And yeah. I say the only thing that Jesus should have corrected himself on, not that I'm saying he should have, yes. Yes. if it was now, would be love yourself. Don't love everyone else yeah, as yourself. Because people hate themselves. You know, yeah. wrong, people are resenting them. themselves yeah. deeply. Yeah. But love thyself as thy neighbor should love you. I think that would fix that. And there's also. Um, I mean, but, but that's a good point. Yeah. But I think in, Jesus says, "Love your neighbour as yourself." Mm -hmm. So that is that's in there. Yourself, so yeah. So, so you've point. got to have a, a love for. You can't love others if you don't love yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't that Christ. It wasn't that Christ was like hating himself. He loved himself. He, had, he loved his relationship with his Father, and he was loved. He was, he was comfortable in that love, but he, he willing to go, he willing to wait to the cross because he had also greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Now when he went on the cross and he said, Far, you know, he's like, Father, where are you? You know, that bit where it, it seems like all dark. But he's quoting uh, a, a psalm. You know, when he, when he says, you know, Father, where are you? You know, it's like dark. But generally, Jesus had that sense of love for himself because he was in connection with the Father. And but the points that you're saying are good, but this love, you know, can you say, I mean, what are your views about Jesus, Abel? What are your views about Jesus? Was he a good man? I was think it, he was a great guy. What, I think was he, he was the son real. of God? Was he the son of God? I don't want to say that, but, and again, I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, I think he was probably, they say he was a homeless fisherman. He went away when he was 12, three years, came back when he was 30. Travelled through East. I reckon he smoked a lot, meditated a lot, came back with his boys and said, you know what, you're doing it wrong. 
don't get it, you're not connecting with the Father, you're not connecting with God. You, you know, you're saying that the, the Son of God is going to return to here. You've got this little hierarchy where you're taking everyone's money and everything they want to put me homeless, and I present myself to you as the Son of God, but so are you. But they forgot that time and just focus on him being the Son of God and just lie there, you know, putting through all that torture. And but I reckon he was a great guy. If he was real, I reckon he was a brilliant guy. And maybe he just said some things as a human would that were wrong. Not wrong, but could be interpreted. So we've looked at an interesting point from John chapter 14. Jesus says this I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he's saying he's the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody can come to the Father but through me. He says in one passage, he says, before Abraham was, that's thousands of years ago, I, I am. In other words, I existed before. So he says, these are words that God used for himself in the Old Testament. Light, bread. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. So, he's given himself an exclusiveness of Godhood. He's also, his mission is, he says in John, uh, Mark 10, 5, uh, Mark, Mark chapter 10, sorry, I don't know the verse, but he says, I give my life a ransom for many. So, he's showing that he's God, and his, his mission is to die for your sin. Now, if you can prove that Jesus didn't rise again, Christianity is finished. Because all he's claiming was, he's the Son of God, he is God in Calvary, he's come to die, he's going to die and rise again. And the proof, the ultimate proof of who he is, the ultimate proof of who he is, is that he rose again. So my, my point to you is, I hear what you're saying about smoking, right? and saying all these things about smoking. You know, that's sure that's 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 but if Jesus, I believe he did, made the claim that he's God, Thomas at the end of the Gospel of John said, bowed to Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. If Jesus claimed to be God, and if he died and rose again, what does that say? So if, if that is the case, if, if that is the case, I must say, I'm, I know you don't believe it, but if he died and rose again, and claimed to be God, what should you do about it? And Jesus offers you today, he says to you, come unto me, all you are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can I tell you a story? These are probably fed up of it. This girl, she went to Puerto Rico to become a prostitute. What's your name? Her mom was crying and where's my daughter? Where's she gone? She found out she'd gone to Puerto Rico. So she went to find her daughter, she looked all over, she couldn't find her daughter. Come on crying, but she left pictures in every hotel, in every shop where she went and came home. Well, her daughter came downstairs with a client. She goes in the toilet, she sees a picture of her mum. It's my mum. She grabs the picture, she turns it around, and it says this. I don't care what you have done, come home. And that's why we're here today, my friend. We're saying to you that God, that's a great story, actually. God's son came down, died on a cross, he cares that you repent, that you turn away from the Bible. But he doesn't care in the sense that he loves you and wants you to come home today. That is the Christian message and the paradigm of finding salvation. Once you believe in Christ, anything that you've ever done in the past is wiped clean. You're forgiven. You're a new creature and you can have a relationship and it's called being born again. Born again means the Spirit of God comes in your heart and you become a new person. So you have the old nature, the natural man, then you now have a spiritual man, a spiritual nature. And once you become born again, there's a fight going on. The old nature trying to pull you back. How are you? The spiritual nature, which you have to feed. 
It's like having a rabbit here and a Rottweiler here it's when you're born again. But the Rottweiler has been whacked on the head by believing in Jesus. You've got to feed the, the rabbit. Jason. Yeah. Jason, the Baptist going. Okay, it's nearly gone. You've got to feed by prayer, Bible study, and reading the word. I'm doing the word by the That's the Christian paradigm. This is how Jesus died for you. Thank you very much. How was you know, that one? It's a really good argument, and I didn't have on that. Revisit my baptism, I think. Okay. Um,